Well, 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 what have we here? Looks like our highways are about to cross each other. This calls for a system interchange. Guys, welcome back. I'm Yumble. We are going to build a another system interchange today. Uh, today we're, we've got two highways crossing one another. This is the same map that I did the stack on. Um, and a stack, a four-level stack, is one of the most common and popular interchanges to use. But what if you wanted to do something a little different? What if you wanted to build what's called a clover stack? So a clover stack has the, has the, what would you call this? Kind of a corkscrew? A clover leaf, I guess. So it has the clover leaf element of the road wrapping around itself to go up or down a level. Similarly, it'll do that on the diagonal. But then just like on the stack, there's going to be two flyovers. So the left hand turns from, I imagine, let's see, I imagine this side and this side will have flyovers like a stack. And this side and this side will have clover leaves to connect the left hand turns. And it's kind of a mixed interchange. It's a really cool idea. And it's just a little, a little different from the stack. Um, but it's an equally effective way to connect, uh, to connect vehicles to a highway, to connect highways to themselves. Uh, let me get this kind of set up and we'll, we'll start going. Okay. So I've decided that this road here will be the sunken one. So the road that isn't built yet will be the sunken one. And this one is going to be for through traffic at grade level, you know, at ground level. Um, I want to show you how I approach sinking a highway. Um, I'm just going to use Anarchy to connect these using two lane roads. We're probably going to go from three lanes down to two lanes or four lanes down to two lanes with a two lane split. I'm not sure how the math is going to work out, but I do prefer building with the two lane road initially. And what I want to do is take this, these center four nodes and I want to sink them down to negative 12 meters because that's guaranteed to fit all of the trucks and all the vehicles. They can all work at negative 12. So if you do a, a non-tunneled road down to negative 12 meters and just select all these guys, boom. And we're going to do, you can see here in um, Move It is the mod. You can do the, the toolbox here, the height tools to object height and click the object that you want it to go to. And boom, that looks great, right? That looks... So it doesn't look great, and there's a reason for that. In the short term, I'm just going to take all uh, all these roads that are... These are still grounded. That's what a grounded road looks like when it's in the air. There's no texture below it to fill it in, so... Um, all you have to do is elevate it by upgrading each of them. And there we go. It's a bit unrefined, but the uh, but it all works out. The pillars are in, happen to be in the right place, which is nice. Um, but yeah, the negative is all figured out. And eventually we're going to slope this nicely. This is a bit steep for my taste right now. But what I want to really do is, is I want to measure up and see how the curve is going to look here. We're about to have a... This is going to branch out. And we're going to do a cloverleaf shape in these corners. You could do this in any direction. It doesn't matter. But this, this just happens to be what I've picked. You know, it is what it is. Um, let me do some calculations and we'll see how that's going to look. All right, executive decision. So this is the ramp. I'm going to turn off curved roads because we really don't need it. Um, road bending is what it's called. Not helpful in interchanges. So I'm going to build a guide road here because I think this is where the clover leaf is going to end. Not exactly here, but this will this will give us our origin point, kind of. I'll show you in a second. So what we'll end up with is this guy will branch out. At the same height, we're going to go three units over. Great, so that's our starting point for this ramp. And this is just a guide road, just like this one up here. It's just a guide so we can get everything even. I'm going to bring this up to right where this one is. And that will determine the beginning of our of the clover port portion of the clover leaf. Um, and of course, this is going to be a bit messy until it <laughs> until it's not anymore. But we're just going to run run this a 7x7 seven seven curve up to the top. Uh, I just wanted to see where this starts. And this is going to be a lot like... There's another video that we did called the... Um, oh my goodness. It's my interchange. What's it called? The, uh, the single point partial clover leaf. This is going to look a lot like that as it's built. Um, as we go around, the technique is going to be very, very similar. But that's our starting point. I know I'm going to do a 7x7 seven seven curve on the clover leaf, so I've went, I've gone 7 units up, because we have to. That's that's just where it starts. 
and then we'll do seven units this way. And just for appearances, I'm actually going to do page up a few, just so we can see what this might look like eventually. So that's the beginning of our 7x7 seven seven curve. I'm going to do another 7x7 seven seven curve, and we're going to go up to, you know, about ground height at this point. We'll probably reslope this later um, to clean clean up the appearance, or we'll definitely reslope this later. It's very steep here and very shallow here. But that came out good, right? That was a 7x7, seven seven, I take it? Yes. And this should be the last curve on the 7x7. Seven seven. It happens to coincide with this. That is, that's just a coincidence. That's not actually a, uh, not actually a thing. You know, that was, that was just dumb coinc dumb luck on my part. But it happened to work out where the 7x7 seven seven starts there and ends there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Um, so give me just a moment to take care of that. Okay, so the clover leaves are doing. We've got, we've got clover leaves on each side. These are the same shape. I'm not, I don't know how they're going to connect yet. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the point is we're going to get it all figured out and then we'll get the slopes right, and then we'll get the, the slope of this road right. Don't worry about that. But here's what I'm thinking. We're about to make our left-hand turns. So really, these um, the clover leaves here are left-hand turns, if you think about it, because it's just this road trying to make a left onto this road, and if you curve it around, the right turn, the right-hand turn becomes a left turn. So we're doing that on both sides. Now, the other two left-hand turns are the stack turns, right? So they're uh, the stack the, if you saw my previous video, you saw that you can make a stack that goes up and over the whole thing. What I think I want to do, I, I just figured this out, to determine where the stack is going to go, why don't we just draw a line there? And that'll actually give us a node on this road. And we can start our, we can start our drawing process from here. So just to imagine, this is just a, just an epiphany, just a, just an idea. Um, I want this to be elevated, so we're going to use elevated road. We're going to go up to 12 meters high. I suppose here, right? That's three units away. Yeah, that's good. And we want it to end. Oh, nice. We want it to end over here, I think. Let's make sure this works. This is the first time I've done it this way. Um, actually, this is about the first time that I've done a clover stack, but I've done enough with partial clover leaves and stack interchanges that I'm pretty sure that I got it, you know, I'm pretty, pretty sure it's gonna work out. So here we go, what if this one started here, as promised, we're gonna do elevated, doo -doo 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 -doo. we're gonna do elevated to positive 12, which should be three units away from that, it is. And then we're gonna, we're gonna curve it using the freeform road tool, going this way, all the way over to here, and that should give us a perfect curve. It does. Look at that. There's our three units. Let's let's measure this just to be just to be perfectly sure. Three units, 24 meters. It's not. It's snapping weird, but yeah, excellent. That is going to be the stack part of the whole thing. And now we can do the same thing on this side. Let me let me do this side too, and then we'll we'll continue in just a second. This is exciting. Okay, so the stack portion is set up. So it's essentially equally as set on both sides. We still haven't figured out right-hand turns yet. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to go, but right now I'd love to do uh, this. Just get this get this situated. There's going to be a ramp here, or a, uh, a bridge rather, and it should be 18, I think 18 units will give us a pillar right in the middle. Yes, cool. So that's just good measuring. If you look at the where the hill stops, I stopped this thing right where the hill stops. That's a good good thing to do. Um, so let's do 18 units across on both sides. Do, 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 do. I'm going to turn off road guidelines for a second because they're not really going to help us here. Um, we're going to go three units up, and this should be exactly the same. 18 units across. And that'll give us a pillar right in the middle because that's the dead center. It's just creating that extra pillar. So underneath, you get, you get the clean... Um, there's enough pillars under the thing to hold each of these roads up. That's good stuff. Um, so this is going to come up a little bit further. Now let's, let's see what we can do with this. I love it when things work out the way that they're supposed to. And by that, I mean, I, I love it when I can use pre-existing guidelines to like, to get us where we want to be. So I'd love to see if we get a perpendicular node, that's just a, that's just a quick thing. If we get a perpendicular node here, is that three units away? It is. Can we curve this? up to this road 
Now that we see where this is coming across, let's do a grounded road. The length doesn't matter. This is a bit of an experiment. I'm not sure what the result will be. Stay tuned. We're going to do uh, this, this off-ramp road. Okay, so it'll actually be this road splits off. So this road's going to come back to here, and that'll be the splitting off point. And I want to mimic this curve if possible. So we're going to do the same thing on this one, just to create a node there so we have a guideline to tell us when to stop. But I suspect... Oh, you know what? It's a lie. It's not real. This is too wide. Oh, shoot. Let me recalculate. I'll be back in just a second. Okay. I think I got it. I think I got it. So what I really want to do is just mimic this corner. And I've done it. It looks a bit weird because it is a bit weird. But I've, I've just mimicked the corner. So using this as a guideline, cut that there so it's the same. Uh, same stopping point for the for the beginning of this of this ramp and it goes around and it ends at the stopping point of the other side and I think that's a very clean way to do it so just to show you how I how I pulled that off we can uh, let's say we go up to here this one stops there we'll use that as a guideline and a stopping point and we want it to stop perpendicular to this one and a real easy way to do that is to just snip that there You'll find me doing that a lot. I always want to make a little little snip where I know we need to. And it's going to come around, and it's going to hit this road, actually. It's a bit weird uh, because we're going to have to use move it to solve this, to, to fix it. But I just want them to end at the same spot because that means that these are perpendicular. And the curves from above are going to look really nice because we're going to have perpendicular curves on either side. Um, this doesn't need to continue on, really. So now the trick is going to be, that is the beginning of our right-hand turn for this. These merge here. Of course, they're going to merge back to the highway somewhere in here. I can figure that out. But what we really need to figure out now is how far are these ramps going to go? Let me go figure that out. I'll share my findings with you. Um, this can be different on different interchanges, by the way, like different... If the angles are not totally perpendicular, all this goes right out the window. So none of this is set in stone. I'm just kind of feeling it out, doing what I want. It just looks nice here if this curve is the same angle as this one. You kind of get that repetition. I think it's going to look really nice when it's all done. Give me just a minute to figure out where these connections are going to happen. So I think I got it. We're, we're almost there. So check this out. My solution to figuring out where these ramps end and how this is going to connect was to just go... I'll, I did it here. Let me show you how it looks when we do it on this side. If we go... I believe I did three units off of this node. Yeah, so that's your first me measurement is three units. It should snap to it, um, but I want it to be at ground level. So three units away. And this actually makes a 45 degree angle on either side, which is good. This is, a, this is good. Geometrically, this whole thing is sound. I like it. And what we're actually going to do is just connect these ramps to this and then delete the little extra bit. So with straight slope turned on and uh, elevated turned on as well, starting at our positive 12 road, we're going to cut the road there and delete that little extra bit because it's not necessary. Same deal over here. This one's going to come down. It's going to stop where the 45 occurs. Uh, some of these are backwards, so we'll turn them the right direction here. Grounded. Grounded, grounded, grounded. Cool. This one is backwards. And these are backwards as well. Nope, those are correct. So that is that. So this will determine the, the end here. And probably the way I'm going to do this is maybe it's a maybe it's a 23 unit thing. Usually is what I go with, 23 or 24. Ooh, let's make it longer here. 33 is looking good. I like that. Cool. So 33 there makes sense to me. This already It already has a node here, so that just kind of works out. And that means that this guy, the sloping is going to be all wrong here, so please ignore, please excuse the appearance of everything as this goes. Look at that. It's it's so messed up. We will we'll solve all that in just a second. That's going to turn out fine. I just want this to end at the same place because it makes it look way better, in my opinion. It doesn't always have to end at the same place, but I think that interchange is kind of, kind of should. I think it looks right. Now, if this is 33 over here, that would be kind of, that'd be kind of cool, right? 32. Um, that is absolutely close enough. The end is like the least, this part, nothing else hinges on this as far as the, the angles or anything. So we're going to do the same thing over here. 
if I really wanted to take the time to refine that, I could. But one meter in this game is an eighth of a unit. The units are this big. One eighth of that is is not that big a deal, honestly. So we'll face this this away. Uh, this one's also going to go down here for this connection. There's a lot of sloping and fixing to be done, but at least we can get everything looking looking similar. We can get it all squared off. Of course, this one goes over here. Let's see where this one. And so now we've got a guide node there. And of course, this is also this is all regular two lane road. I haven't even upgraded anything to highway yet. We'll see when that happens. And this we wanted to do th the 33 unit curve. 32. I see that 32, and I say I say we go for it. 32, 33. What's the difference? One meter in this game is like nothing, especially when we're at like the end of the end of the build like this. The hard part's over. Now it's just like refining it, getting the slope right. I like how that breaks off, actually. That's gonna be, that'll be a good little angle for cars to break off at. We'll probably expand that node a little bit. Um, I'm gonna connect the last side here, and I'm gonna start cleaning stuff up, and we'll see how it looks in just a moment. So here we go. It needs a little beautification and a little bit of love and maybe some, some plant life and some rocks and stuff, but functionality-wise, we're, we're up and running. So if you couldn't see the vision before, now you kind of see the whole picture where it's kind of like a stack. These are identical to a stack, but instead of stacking even higher, we end up taking these left-hand turns. And instead of going up and over these already existing lefts, you just kind of do a gentle circle. So it's a bit longer of an interchange, I'd say, than a stack. Um, similar in difficulty to build, probably. But I think it's cool. It's kind of refreshing. It's got a different look to it. Um, everything's up and running. I'm just going to beautify it a little bit and we'll see how good it can look. So here we have all the usual suspects. We've got, uh, we've got our key wall acting as a retaining wall. You know, you need key, key anarchy and a custom key to do this. You can do a regular key, but you, there's a lot of, um, really good looking walls. Uh, yeah, put a rock in the middle of it. Why not? Pretty classic. Um, bunch of trees, obviously pretty, pretty simple. Uh, if you get node controller and intersection marking tool. I did a whole video on intersection marking tool, so free, feel free to check that out. It makes these merges make a lot more sense, where these two are, are smooth together and then they exit this way. Let's go to one where the traffic's actually entering and exiting. Makes it very obvious where the exits are. Lane math wise, I opted to do two by two by two here. So uh, the, the whole journey would be, uh, they can cross the bridge these guys come up and around here. Now they both have to merge. These two roads have to merge. So there's a merge here for traffic coming from this direction going right. They merge here and then all of them have to merge. So two plus two equals four. And then they'll merge back down to three because that's our standard highway length. And I think that's, I think that's a, an elegant way to do it. Somewhat elegant. Uh, these guys go right here. If they want to make a left, then they're going up and over the flyover there. If they want to make a right, then they stay stay low through this kind of row of trees here. Um, I also opted, along with the intersection marking tool and node controller, the keys, the rocks, the trees, I opted to add a bunch of pillars. Um, pillars in places that make sense. So the game doesn't, if you're using Anarchy, the game often won't add pillars in places because they don't want it to go through a road. So you kind of have to find the places that make sense. Fortunately for us, I was able to just line up these sets of pillars so in between these two central pillars, if you use move it and click three objects and then click align objects, it'll put this right in the middle. And that spot happens to be exactly where it needs to be. Um, so that looks really nice from, from below at least. Like if, a, if vehicles are going through it, let's see. No, nope, you're going right. No one's going through it right now. If, if this guy wants to go left, we'll take a look at it. If not, I'm going to give up the chase. Hey, there we go. Okay. So you come here. So now you can see from, from the driver's perspective, going underneath, all the pillars are, are aligned nicely and they're all in, in, um, in their place. And this is instead of a flyover here. This guy, he, he could have gone on a flyover if this were a stack, but instead it's a clover stack, so you get those, those little, not quite roundabout pieces, but you get that three quarter of a roundabout and then grade separated, it goes over itself. But yeah, that's the clover stack. It's a good alternative to many other interchanges. I really don't like clover leaf interchanges for as much as I talk about like partial clover leaves 
and uh, you know, partial clover leaves and, and partial, uh, what's it called, single point par clothes, that kind of thing. Um, as much as I talk about those, I don't like their namesake, the clover leaf, because it's really, really bad. This is another free flowing interchange, so it's free flowing on all sides, very effective, and it looks really good too. Might even look better than a stack. I don't know. We can argue about it in, in the comments if you want. Uh, but we'll call that a day. Guys, thanks for, for watching the video. My name is Yumble. I stream on Twitch twice a week. We also have a really great Discord where you can come and ask questions and post pictures of your cities and, and videos if you want, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have questions in the comments. Feel free to see me on Twitch a couple days a week. Um, that's all I got. Guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.